Good morning, Maria. Were nice you, to be with you. Were you surprised, Carly, last night that all of them basically backed away from, from uh, supporting the eventual nominee? Do you think breaking that pledge will hurt them in the general election? <laughs> well, first of all, nothing Donald Trump does surprises me, and he changes his mind all the time. So it was just a matter of time before he would change his mind on this. And now suddenly he doesn't look quite so inevitable, does he? Uh, I have said from the week that Donald Trump entered the race, he doesn't represent me and he doesn't represent my party. And I continue to feel that way. And so, frankly, no, I'm not surprised. Let me ask you, we were having a debate earlier, Carly, on the set about social issues versus economic issues. You know, I run into a lot of people who feel like, okay, I'm all the way to the right when it comes to economic fiscal issues. But when it comes to social issues like a woman's right to choose, like gay rights, there are many Republicans who are sort of center and center right on those issues. And all of a sudden, with the support that you're seeing for folks like Ted Cruz, from the support that you're seeing for folks like Donald Trump, even from the evangelicals. Is it, it, it's interesting to me, and I wonder how you feel about that, that it feels like those issues, those social issues, have dropped down in importance. Do you see it that way? Actually, I don't, Maria. I think what's going on here is, first of all, there are many people who support Donald Trump who support his positions. I mean, he supported partial birth abortion. He has never spoken about religious liberty, and he agrees with the Democrats on health care more than he agrees with Republicans. On the other hand, having been out there a lot, I can tell you that most people are waking up to how extreme the Democrat Party actually is, for example, on the subject of abortion. Hillary Clinton supports partial birth abortion. Most men and most women do not. Hillary Clinton supports that a child can be aborted any time up until the moment it's born, literally. Hillary Clinton supports no parental notification for a 13-year-old girl. That's extreme, and most Americans don't support that. And while most Americans now, many Americans say, okay, the marriage issue is settled, they also think it's wrong that people are being denied their religious liberty and their ability to practice their religion as they see fit. They're horrified mm. by the fact that the federal government is suing the little sisters of the poor over Obamacare. And so these remain very important issues and economic issues are always of paramount importance. People are concerned about their jobs and their futures and most importantly, the jobs and the futures of their kids and grandkids. Yeah, which is why we talk so much about the tax reform plans that are on the table right now for the, for the candidates. Right. Let me ask you, just to close the loop on this issue in terms of supporting the eventual nominee. Carly, I know you're not a supporter of Donald Trump. Obviously, you're supporting Ted Cruz. But if Trump becomes the nominee, will you support him? He does not represent me, and he does not represent my party, period. And I will spend all of my energy making sure that he is not our nominee. Gotcha. Dagan McDowell. Carly, I want to ask you this about the, just the personality. Trump is himself, and nobody can replicate that. And watching those, the town hall last night with Cruz and Trump and Kasich, Cruz struggles because he sounds over-rehearsed and, uh, and over-prepared. What, can you, what guidance can you give him to make him more relatable? Because he's just not as relatable as Trump is. See, I disagree, Daryl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just disagree. I mean, I think Trump is a big act. I think he always has been. And I think, for example, here's the biggest act of all. Donald Trump says he's going to challenge the system. Donald Trump is the system. Donald Trump has taken advantage of the system his entire life. He's the other side of the coin to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has made her millions selling access and influence from the inside. And Donald Trump has made his billions buying people like Hillary Clinton off. He is the system. He will not challenge it. He will preserve it. He will protect it. And he will take advantage of it. So I think everything he says is sort of uh, poll tested. <laughs> and by the way, he changes what he says when he gets himself in a corner. And when it becomes clear that, let's just look at last week, for example, we have a major terrorist attack in the heart of Europe. We have terrorist threats and terrorist attacks here in the United States. And what does Donald Trump do? He attacks Heidi Cruz. Honestly, I don't find that very relatable. Yeah, and by the way, Heidi Cruz came on this program. She's incredibly successful, has been successful before. 
you know, being uh, uh, in the campaign with her husband. It, it was, I think it did take away from, I don't know what, how you feel about this, Monica Crowley, but people were upset to see the wives come into this. Yeah, no, it, it was such a huge mistake, I think, on the part of Donald Trump. Carly, good morning. It's Monica. I just wanted to ask you to... Hi. Hi, Monica. Uh, I just wanted you to address what Donald Trump's main argument is here, now that he's racked up some serious uh, primary victories, which is that he is realigning the movement. He's realigning the Republican Party. He's attracting new people, young people, people who have never voted before. How do you counteract that argument with a more traditional candidate like Senator Cruz? Well, actually, Ted Cruz wins with young people, not Donald Trump. Ted Cruz wins with women, not Donald Trump. And I think you'll see that margin grow <laughs> now that Donald Trump's character has been revealed. He clearly has a problem with strong women, let's just say it. I also think that Donald Trump has won in open primaries, that is where Democrats and independents can cross over, sorry. But I actually think it's Republicans' job to choose the Republican nominee, not Democrats and independents. But here's the other thing that I would say more to your point. The more people learn about Donald Trump, the less he wins. That's a fact. So in Arizona, for example, he won. But he won at the beginning of that long early voting period. He didn't win at the end. Hmm. And so I think what you're starting to see now is Donald Trump has, in fact, begun to peak because, as I say, the more people see, the less they like him. So let's just see how this turns out, because we've got a long way to go, actually. We've got a lot of delegates yet to award, and we'll see who's growing the party. We'll see who's winning these, winning these contests. Donald Trump is not going to be our nominee. So, so you think Wisconsin is going to be victorious for Ted Cruz? And, and, and what about some of these I, northeastern contests coming up, Carly? I'm talking Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Is Ted Cruz going to resonate there? Well, you know, let me just say, um, Michigan was a place where, for example, John Kasich was supposed to win, or at least he was supposed to come in second because he resonates in the Northeast. Actually, he came in third behind Ted Cruz. Little noted at the time, but I think significant. I think Ted Cruz is going to do very well in Wisconsin. And I think as people get to know Ted Cruz, what they understand about Ted Cruz is he hasn't changed his positions. He is consistent. He is substantive. He has offered very detailed policy proposals. Look, I voted for him long before I had a conversation with him about endorsing him. And I voted for him because he has a track record of being a constitutional conservative. That's important because constitutional conservatives understand the problem is too much power too much economic power and too much political power concentrated in the hands of too few. Yeah. That is the problem. And Republicans have presided over that, but they also see, I've also looked at all of his policy positions, and his tax proposal will work to reignite economic growth. His proposal to roll back regulations will work. He has a sensible proposal for how we're going to rebuild the military. Frankly, I don't hear any proposals for Donald Trump, and John Kasich cannot possibly win.